Hey, Kyle. It's me, you, from the past. Hope you're doing all right. I know I am. Today, we're going to wrap up this series of instructional vid videos for you, and we're going to cover underglaze transfers. Now, it's important to note we're not making our own underglaze transfers. We tried that a few times without much success. So instead, we're going to be using transfers from Elan Pottery and Sanbo Ceramics. Same things before, we're just going to be making some bourbon bowls, so chop them up into, uh, what, three quarters of a pound out of a four pound log. Quick reminder about how to make these things. Number one, center, looking good. Two, drop the hole. There's plenty of water. Make this as easy as possible. These are supposed to be pretty easy. The difficult part comes later. Use consistent pressure to open up. You should have really compressed the bottom there. Try to leave yourself a half an inch. All right, Kyle. Compress the sides in so that way you can get a nice thick donut of clay. When you're pulling up the first time, reminder, you are squeezing. You're not pulling. Don't know why it's called that. Who do we talk to about that, Kyle? Be the change you want to make in the pottery. <laughs> All right, we'll only do a couple pulls and then we're gonna go into a shaping pull here. And looking for that U shape of a bowl. and We're gonna modify it quite a bit. So it's really important with these transfers, we try to keep those walls as flat as possible. See what happens whenever we do the transfer, if it is at an angle of any sort, um, it'll kind of cause it to wrinkle. And we're not totally cool with that. So flat as possible. So we're gonna use our rib here to make a bourbon bowl like we did before, or ice cream bowl. I mainly use mine for ice cream um, and soda. And to do that, we get that harsh angle on the bottom using the rib. So I'm pushing in on the, uh, on the inside we're pushing out from the inside and then catching it with the rib. And that can cause it so I can hold the rib flat on the board to get that nice flat angle. Remember that flat, you need it flat. Trim off some of the excess clay, you don't need it. This will help trimming later too. At least this way you can use it to also shape Look at you trying to smooth out the lip as if it's going to matter at all. All right, so first we got porcelain slip. Kyle, if you need any reminders on how we make our colored slip, please go back to the original bourbon bowl video. Walks you through how to do that. I didn't feel like including it in this one because me. So nice smooth porcelain since we're using stoneware. We need porcelain to give it that nice pop of white. Here we have a turquoise. Uh, mixed colored porcelain stain slip and underneath we're going to use an orange blue and orange classic combo you're not changing the world here remember you are just learning how to do this as well maybe we can get a little bit more adventurous in the future but for right now stick to the classics Reminder, Kyle, that these colors seem a little pastel now. They fire a lot stronger. So to smooth this out, to get that nice gradient, what you do is you smooth it first, and then you can see right there, you're kind of jiggling up and down. That's causing the orange and the blue to kind of blend together in the middle. That gives us that nice transition that we want. All right, so up first we're using Sambo underglaze transfer. So what they do is they silk screen them onto uh, Japanese paper, Kozo paper. Um, and they do something special that I don't do. Um, I don't know how to contact them. I mean, I have the paper, I have everything. I'm a printmaker for G Willikers. And uh, yeah, I just can't get it to work on my own. Anybody who actually knows what they're doing with this, drop something in the chat, please let me know. All right, so we cut out the shape. I'm gonna show you a different version of how to do this uh, coming up, but this one is more of a die cut. You cut it out sort of deal. 
Uh, first off, we're going to mist the whole piece. Nice, consistent mist over the, the entire thing. And then remember, wherever you put this down, it's where it goes. <gasps> and again, this is why we want the walls to be nice and smooth and straight. So gently lay it on there. The water on the clay will suck the paper to it and that'll start absorbing the underglaze from underneath. Give it a, a little second, then you can start burnishing using the red rib to smooth it out. This whole process from beginning to end probably only takes like three or four minutes, all right? It goes very quickly because there's lots of moisture evaporation stuff you gotta deal with. So you wanna smooth out, you don't want it to blur or anything like that, so after this part, it's just about smoothing, condensing, compressing, burnishing transfers it from the paper to the clay body it's nice to have them overlap every now and then but the advantage of doing these type where you can cut it out is it's a lot easier to just kind of pick and choose where you're gonna go now it is also a lot more tedious because you got to cut several pieces out um, Earlier in the summer, you cut out a bunch of bees and butterflies and sharks and octopuses and stuff. So that octopi, so that way you can put them on the bottom of pots. So that was nice that you had it, but it's a bit of a pain when you're doing it on demand. All right, once you had it all burnished, give it one last little spray and then wait. See that guy in the purple walking by? He started out by the back building. That's how long you need to wait. You're not burnishing, you're not smoothing. This is gonna oversaturate it on purpose. Then we can start with the peel reveal. Isn't that gorgeous? When it works, it works super well. You have had some issues with it. The Sambo ones seem to transfer a lot easier than the Elan transfers, but Elan has just better transfers. Um, I think they get their stuff from some pretty good places or they design them in house. When Sanbo looks like more, they get them from like photo stock and stuff. More thing to note right there, Kyle. If it doesn't transfer perfectly, so you see like little bits of porcelain slip sticking through the mountains and the black areas, that's fine. These pots are gonna fire and condense down a lot. Gonna cut it off the bat. Let that stiffen up a little bit more. And you can give it the old trimmer rooney. Don't, don't, nope, nope, don't say trimmer rooney, Kyle. That is not, that's not who you are. That's not who we're projecting to be in the world. Nothing special about trimming. Same thing as with the bourbon bowls before. You're just trying to clear it off, get that nice little foot, get that sharp angle going straight down. And you know we're gonna be putting porcelain slip on this, so. Remember to work from the middle out. I wanted to show you an extended version of this class so that way you could really see what you're working with here. Um, it seems like the pot is off, right? It's very wobbly and You've been finding that doing this transfer method tends to warp them just slightly and it makes it a little bit harder for trimming. Um, ultimately, they sit flat with everything you do afterwards, so it's not too much of a concern, you know? Uh, but it's just eh, kind of a bummer. All right, so now we're compressing the bottom of the, the clay to kind of smooth it out using that red rib, a very versatile tool. First, a layer of porcelain slip goes on the stoneware. Again, you want the clay to kind of, they want to hang out with each other, right? So we got to give them something to hold on to. And then this is a porcelain slip marbled inside this syringe. Here's one way of doing it where you just do one big band up top and let it all layer. Air bubbles and stuff actually work out pretty well in this method. Because then when you smack it down, it all bands in different ways. And 
put more if you want to. Not really, it really doesn't matter. It was probably gonna fire grade anyway. Look at that. Make sure to smooth out the very, very top of it. Uh, just because it can tend to look a little ragged if you don't. It kind of gives a texture you don't like. So, Ugh. the whole point of these is to be held in the hand and like to drink or eat out of. So, you want to make sure they feel good. Oh, with that extra drip. So you can keep altering these. Um, I think I go a little bit too far in this one. I cover up a lot of the um, transfer, but that's the nice thing about this method is kind of doing them on the, on the top band and then having the slip come from underneath. This was your original idea when you were doing uh, the bourbon bowls was for have the slip to kind of come up for the transfers. So it's really great to see it all kind of marry perfectly together. Well, perfect. Uh, I like them. Um, and I have been using them and there we hang out all the time. All right, let's take a look at another one. I'm going to show you two different ways. Uh, well, I'm going to show you three different ways of applying these transfers on. So same thing as before with the bourbon bowls, pull up, try to keep straight sides. So the thinner you go, the more chance that these can collapse, by the way, Kyle. You can see the lip on that one really wanted to buckle in. It didn't, but it wanted to. Same thing as before, porcelain slip. Uh, we'll do some different colors on this one, though. So we're using red and turquoise. That turquoise is amazing. Make sure to buy more of that stain in the future because you, you went through it fast. So we got red and turquoise. And here we are using the transfer from Elan Pottery. It's cut down to shape to begin with. Uh, I think we did three inch strips on it. Uh, go ahead and mist up the whole thing. Wake it back up. It's been sitting uh, overnight in a bag. So it's got plenty of time to stiffen. All right. You can see the wrinkles immediately form. Uh, but it's actually pretty okay uh, when it happens. So you can even see this one goes upwards. I miss a little bit. Our slip on the bottom is going to cover up a lot of those errors. These transfers are made a lot more for hand building, like flat things like butter dishes. I don't know why I immediately went to butter dishes, but... <laughs> But they're made for flat things. And the fact that you're trying to do it on a three-dimensional object means that they're going to buckle a little bit. But it still works pretty well, got to say. So you misted it. You put the piece down. Now you're burnishing all over. Give it another quick mist. Wait a second. And then you can start peeling. So same idea as before, except for it's just an all-over design. And they have a really nice design here. Um, very similar to my lino cut, but I got mine from a different place, so I don't know. So if it's not peeling perfectly, just stop, lay it back a little bit. You can see when it starts to mess up and burnish it back down. The color covers up a lot of the errors with this. Um, when you do this on just bare clay, not bare, like B-A-R-E. Not like I'm being uh, bullied by a grizzly. Um, but whenever it's on bare clay, you can really notice when those errors happen. But they work really well with other characters. We'll talk about that later. See how gorgeous that turns out, though? Oof. And now we're finally in focus. <sighs> Foop. Same thing as before, quick trim here. Uh, we're just cutting that angle out of it. 
I didn't want to rob you, Kyle, of seeing the absolutely gorgeous slip drip. I know that's your favorite part of this whole thing. Uh, big shout out to Old Forge Creations. They do it on the side of their pots and going down from the top, um, which wasn't what I wanted. But uh, I'd been doing similar things for a while. They're the ones that introduced the idea of a syringe into this. Nice thing about pottery, there's no original ideas. One of the oldest art forms turns out uh, we're all just kind of uh, copying each other as we go. All right, so this slip, you just went messy with it. You just, I think the yellow was a little bit runnier, but it just poured out. But it'll still work out pretty nicely. If it runs down, immediately clean it up. Um, some of it I didn't clean up right away. I was like, hey, whatever, you know, like I can just sand it later. No, it, it, it's you're going to sand your transfer off, Kyle. All right, let that one stiffen up. And let's move on to the next one. I wanted to show you one with B-Mix clay, Kyle. Um, B-Mix is like a porcelain substitute. You know, porcelain throws like a... Uh, like stiff cream cheese, you're not as big of a fan of it. You like B-Mix, so we make we use the porcelain to make our slips, and we'd much rather throw with B-Mix. It's gonna fire a nice, pretty white, uh, which means we can do a lot with it, you know? But same things before, except for just everything's harder because of the media, because it doesn't throw like our stoneware. Our stoneware is like big bits of grog in it, and it, it, it really grips your hand. This doesn't grip your hand as much. And then porcelain, even less so. So it's a big, big difference. But that's why we just make these little guys. One thing about the B-Mix, though, you, kind, you like that sandiness that fires from our sand work. It looks like almost like a beach whenever it's uh, bare. This one... Uh, fires that pure white. I mean, not as white, but very white. Straight up the sides also helps to use a metal rib for this one since it's so much drier. So what we're going to be doing on this one is we're going to be putting the stencil on while it's wet on the wheel. Let it stiffen for a little bit, obviously. Um, yell at it, that sort of thing. Let it stiffen for a little while. And then the same process is going to apply, except for we don't need to spray this time the transfers will immediately start sucking into fresh clay. And that's the nice thing about this. So we can throw the straight sides and then we can alter it later. And then even this, you can see how it still wasn't super straight. It's so hard to do that. You kind of have to make it go in for it to go straight. That makes sense. Well, anyway, so you can see here, it doesn't matter. I can just push down all the way around. Um, I can also throw with my hand on the inside, pushing it out into the transfer. You have a lot of options because now it's malleable, it's movable. And it's it's something I wish I wouldn't have learned on the last day of the workshop. Like I just literally went, oh, I might as well try it, I have all this stuff out. The last day you figure this out. So that's why we're making this video now. So that way Kyle, you can do this in the future. You can do a lot of things. You can apply porcelain slip, the same thing. Just let it stiffen up, then put this on there. Uh, you can you can do this on mugs. You can also do this and then do that wavy texture through with the, the tool. You, I mean, really, the, the pie is the limit here, Kyle. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Like, I, and it transfers so well. It will shrink more than the other ones because the clay body shrinking, but it transfers so well. Look at that all the way around, just matched perfectly onto the piece. Later, I think I put like a green translucent celadon glaze on it, and it just all oh, looked gorgeous. So make sure you don't touch the outside, but now you can use the inside, use a rib. Uh, you can shape it however you want now, Kyle. This is gonna open up a lot of possibilities. Maybe even the idea of putting the transfer, like throwing a plate basically, and then putting the transfer on that, and then pulling the plate up into a bowl shape. You can do those sort of things, I believe in you. So we're just gonna take a look at another ones uh, with this. Is, uh, this. I just wanted to show this with it because it's the same idea. Um, but it's it's pretty nice on there, huh?
Also, the BMX trims way better. No grog sticking into your tool. It all just knocks right out. I still apply the porcelain slip down just to give it something because porcelain slip and BMX still aren't the same thing. Like, they're closer. They're friends. They're like cousins or like half brothers, half siblings. So you, st- you, st- you still need something to help connect it there. Also, towards the end, Kyle, you really just started using a lot more slip on these. Like, whatever. Who cares? I think it's because it was the end of the workshop and I didn't need to have a bunch of yellow porcelain slip in my day-to-day life in September. I wanted to show you an example of what it's like with using a transfer that's got a lot of black in it. It doesn't transfer as well. That's really it. <laughs> it's... It's a bit of a bummer. That's, I mean, that, <clears throat> I mean that's the, that's the idea. Is it just works harder, but it does tend to explode with color whenever you got these slips shown right. We'll see what that looks like at the end. All right, so back to those beginning ones. Finishing is very important with these. So make sure you sand. Because you want these to be pretty smooth. Remember, these are going to be held in the hand all over. So you want them to be pretty nice in the hand. And any imperfections, uh, it's not like you're really hunting for imperfections. You know, like, this has got to be perfect. It's, it's more you just don't want it, like little sharp bits to stick out, all that sort of stuff. After that, put them back on the, um, put them back on the old drying rack so that way they can uh, get completely dry in time to do a bisque firing. And remember, you don't like doing bisque fires. <laughs> so <laughs> they magically are done. Once they come out, give them a good old rinse. You can get a good idea of what the colors are all going to look like, though. Like, look at that. <sighs> You're like, oh, no, this one's going to be obnoxious. And it is, but in a great way. Waxing them is just the same as anything else. Get that center tap. You're cranking with your foot underneath. Getting that wax. You want it to be pretty consistent. You're not a big fan of the green wax. You were using a pre a wax previously that you liked a lot more. And uh, I never, never got the name on it, you know? So... Hopefully you can find that. At one time there was a purple wax. It looked like, uh, honestly, it just looked like you could eat it. Or the ooze from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. Remember I- Ivan Ooze? It looks like that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to show you two different glazing methods. First, I want to show you the one where we put a red on the inside and on the lip. This is the M&M red. We're firing cone six electric. This one really, really, really has to be perfectly mixed or else it does not work. So you got to get it all shook up from the bottom. So what we're doing here is we're pouring it onto the inside, holding it for six seconds, giving that little wiggle. I'm sure I'm only doing one of these for this, but you do this to a lot of them, Kyle. So the little jiggle, because you're gonna have a lot of issue. You always have a little issues with the air bubbles when you dip the lip in. All right, pour it out and then dunk it straight in. Don't try to go that deep. I know you uh, will. I don't know what was going on that day, but you did. But one thing I wanted to show you on this one is if it doesn't go perfectly, that's still okay. Cause uh, we can just grab ourselves a wet little sponge and uh, wipe it off, wipe, wipe, wipe. See, I'm kind of smoothing it out. Cause I didn't like how much it creeped down. I want to show off them skulls. All right, let that one dry for a while. Now we're going back to our best friend, Clear. A lot of these videos, Kyle, are based around just using Clear. I'm a big fan of surface decoration, it turns out. 
I used to not be like when I was in college, like all I did was, was just glaze formulation is just doing all that chemistry and math. All I want to do is make new glazes all the time. I think we fried cone nine oxidation in college and that's all I wanted to do. And then now that I'm like an adult, all I want is a clear and that's it. <laughs> I want to do everything else beforehand. I think this is a had so many troubles and things aren't working. All right, so the m M&M red one, what we're doing is we're holding it on the slip part for four seconds, and then we dunk all the way down to the rim for two seconds, and then we pull it out. Reasoning, the transfers have a tendency of running with too much clear on it, so you have to do it in stages. So the slip part, and I can show you again on this one too, slip part goes down for three seconds by itself, and then dunk all the way in and then pull out from where the transfers are. This is a really important step. Anything more than three seconds of glaze on the transfers will cause them to run, uh, which is not an ideal situation for life. When loading the kiln, I wanted to show this off here for you so you can remember. Kiln posts. You can stack kiln posts together. So there I have a one inch and a three inch kiln post, or maybe a half inch and a three inch. So as long as they are flat and even, you can stack them on top of each other. It's okay. You used to be very apprehensive about that. But uh, you can kind of grind them on the ground, like the concrete ground next to the kiln. That'll help smooth them out. Um, you can uh, just try to make sure they're clean every time. You have that sodium silicate powder underneath all your pots to help prevent them from sticking to the kiln shelf. B-Mix really likes to uh, fuse itself from time to time when we do our firing. And remember with shelves, so you can see that sodium sil silicate up there. With shelves, you gotta be super careful to not damage the kiln walls. Those elements, like that thing on, next to my elbow, that thing is what, $400 to buy a new one if it breaks? Or the thermocouple, like all that stuff is so expensive in there and you never want anything to be your fault, Kyle. So just be very careful as you put these straight in. See that little wiggle you gave it? That made sure that it's not gonna move. Look at those. Look how that glaze works. Doesn't that work so well? So the clear works on the outside. You got that red going from the inside out. The clear and red where they overlap will not work, obviously. Uh, but the slips on the bottom transfer up very nicely. Uh, here's some chickens. Uh, <laughs> here's some other options where I did purple on the lip. You can do different. We, we got a few different cone six glazes, so might as well try it out. Black always looks nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, like this is. Uh, I feel like this process is something you really figured out towards the very, very end of the workshop. I look forward to the idea of like these being on mugs and these being on bigger bowls. And you know, it doesn't just have to be the bourbon bowls. You can really like do whatever you want at this point. Now that you're comfortable in how to use them. What's up next for you though, is figuring out how to do it yourself. Cause then you can have your face all over these. And I think that's what everybody truly, truly wants. flamingos like a dynamic color underneath all right well kyle this has been great i've had a really fun time with you these past uh few weeks showing off what you need to work on so cheers i will see you next summer and we can get right back at it love you